Well, the game of football has taught me so many, so many things, man. Now, think about, think about the huddle we have right now, right? I tell people this all the time. There's a reason why they call it a huddle. You know, he, people have been huddling all their lives, trying to find ways to enhance each other's lives. The great teams, the great teams do that all the time. The great teams do that. The better the, the better the huddle, the better the team. And so it, it, it's simple, man, how if you huddle for all the right reasons, we wouldn't have Ferguson. We wouldn't have some of the challenges that we have in our society. But as we all know, there's always a moment when somebody doesn't belong in the huddle. And yet we have to continue to move on. We gotta continue to play. So the game of life, man, is always surrounded, starting with the hub. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm lucky enough to know that, you know, by the graces of God, man, it's, it's been a it's been a nice huddle. It's been a nice huddle. And if I just keep making sure that he's in front of me, I'm gonna be all right. First, we're going to start off with our mock draft rules like we always do. Number one, these picks are based off what I would do based off the personnel. I look at the rosters, I look at the depth chart, I even look at the practice squad and guys that are on injured reserve. So a lot of these selections are based off what I see on the team already and what I would do based off the personnel that's on the two deep. And number two, the picks are not indicative of where these guys will actually go in the draft. I don't think certain guys will go this high, but if I were in charge of these teams with their personnel, with these uh, array of talent at my disposal, I would pick those players there. So it's not indicative of where these players will actually go. And the rankings are not final yet. So if you see guys ahead of certain guys, it's not because I think this guy is a better player. He may be a better fit for this team. But my rankings are not done yet. So don't take that into account when you're watching this. And number four, most importantly, it's only a mock draft. Stop tripping. And we'll get this thing kicked off with the Cleveland Browns who own the number one overall pick. And to me, that's the Sean Watson. He's one of two clear-cut top quarterback prospects in this draft class. Watson has the accuracy, the poise under pressure, and the big game experience in leadership to excel as a pro. And as we look at picks two through seven, I have a hard time thinking the 49ers will pass on a talent like Leonard Fournette. Many people will hate to hear this, but Colin Kaepernick wasn't the problem this year, nor has he ever been the problem in San Francisco. He's coming off a 16 touchdown to only four interception season, and you add a weapon like Fournette, and now you're cooking with Crisco. And looking at my pick for the Chicago Bears and Deshaun Kaiser, he's the other top quarterback prospect I alluded to earlier. Kaiser reminds me a lot of Steve McNair when he was coming out of Alcorn State. I think his ability in big games also stood out to me. You want quarterbacks that are not afraid of pressure, and that's pressure of the defenders, pressure of the game, pressure of the situations within the game, and he and Deshaun Watson both excel in that area tremendously. Here are picks 8 through 14. Miles Garrett, I think, would be an ideal fit in Cincinnati, as does Delvin Cook with the Panthers, who would add the home run threat from the backfield. The Saints land a Ray Lewis clone and Reuben Foster out of Alabama, and the Eagles give their fans and their beat writers what they've been clamoring for all season long, a wide receiver in Mike Williams out of Clemson. Now, taking a deeper look at the Miles Garrett selection, Many will say, how could you have him fallen this far? Well, in my opinion, outside of him being an athletic freak, he's not there yet as a football player. And putting him in this situation with Cincinnati is just like putting Malik Collins in the situation down in Dallas. The coaching in place will give him the best chance to try to realize those skills. And we have our third quarterback going in the first round, and it's Patrick Mahomes out of Texas Tech. Now, Mahomes, in my opinion, is a cross between Matthew Stafford and Ben Roethlisberger. I also think Mahomes has the best field vision of all the quarterbacks in this draft class. With Bruce Arians' love for the deep ball, he grabs a quarterback that has the ability to throw it from end zone to end zone in Patrick Mahomes. Moving on to picks 15 through 21 and some really good talent here with Solomon Thomas out of Stanford who single-handedly beat North Carolina in the Sun Bowl. He'll add some much-needed punch to the Colts' pass rush. 
John Ross, Jamal Adams, Juju Smith-Schuster, in my opinion, will be very solid pros. I think in this mock, they land in ideal situations. And I'm a big fan of both Zach Cunningham and Jabril Peppers. And put Peppers at strong safety and just let him flourish. Christian McCaffrey to the Bucks adds the dynamic game-breaking ability to their offense. He's a legit threat to score as a runner and as a receiver and will give the Bucks a consistent down-to-down -down threat within their offense. Picks 21 through 28, you start to see a lot of work being done in the trenches with Taco Charleston, Garrett Bowles, and some great backers in Tim Williams, Raekwon McMillan, and Gerard Davis out of Florida. But I really like both tight ends and their fits here. O.J. Howard out of Alabama is going to be a star in the NFL. He can block like an offensive lineman and can run routes and catch like these new age tight ends that you see sprinkled all around football. And it's the nature of his all-around game that makes him special. And I, I think he'll thrive in Pittsburgh. Jordan Leggett is cut from the same cloth. His blocking has improved over last season and his receiving skills along with his ability after the catch is unquestioned. This adds the missing link to the Giants passing game and will make them much more dangerous in 2017. And finally, the back end of the first round and the two teams that don't have first round picks with their selections in round two, I can see a Dory Jackson being a total Jerry Jones move. He's box office and has value as a returner. I like the fit of Demarcus Walker with the Falcons and Carl Lawson with the Patriots as well as McKinley who adds another pass rusher to that Raiders front seven. I spoke a little bit about Adoree Jackson, but I do really like his ability to find interceptions. Two questions you're always asking about prospects. Can you score and can you take the ball away? In my opinion, Jackson can do both, which makes him a premier talent in the 2017 NFL Draft.